get into some content today. And the focus of today is, you know, we always start with the first Thursday of the month, focusing on listings. And so it kind of con coincides with the conversation we just have, like, what's your favorite thing? And it, it's cool because real estate offers so many different options and you can work with buyers, you can work with listings, you can dedicate yourself to only one or the other, uh, or you can do both. And so today we're going to talk about listings and specifically how to promote and market. And even more specifically, we're going to talk about open houses. So quickly, who here has held an open house before? I know Dana has. Brian raises his hand. Casey, I see you've been doing some open houses. Um, Dawn, I think, has, has some experience. So we have some, some folks here who have dabbled in open houses. I will ask this question to the group. What's the point of an open house? Contacts. 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 Brian says attract buyers. Not necessarily for that house. And not necessarily for that house, he says. Yep. Anybody else have feedback? Market your business. There you go. Market your business. I love all these answers, guys. This is exactly why we do open houses. Please note that nobody said to sell the house. <laughs> It seems counterintuitive, but if you want a crazy stat, 3% of homes sell from the open house. 3% of homes sell from the open house. So you might think to yourself, if you're a brand new agent, well, then why the heck would I hold an open house? And the answer is all three of those answers we just heard. So we're going to talk about those three things. Number one, Casey mentioned to market your brand or your business. Brian said to attract buyers, not necessarily for that house. And then Dawn said to get contacts. So for those of you who are brand new to real estate, we've got several of you on the call here. So two, Daniela, Tiffany, uh, you know, we'll say you're brand new to real estate. The one thing that I will always preach is to get your contacts. And what a contact is, is a real estate conversation. It's a two-way conversation with a person that has, uh, you know, hints of real estate or you talk directly about real estate. A contact in the, t in the simple context, um, sometimes people will um, regard that as a phone call but there are so many other avenues that we can be gaining contacts. Uh, I'm really happy to say that, um, you know, about half of our coaching um, agents right now are averaging over a hundred contacts per week. I will always put the magic number at 100 contacts per week. This is 100 real estate contacts. Now it can come in the form of phone calls, I realize it's 2020, so why not include text messages as long as it's two-way, meaning I send a text message, I receive a text message back from the same person. I also understand that social media holds a lot of power, so why not uh, count a uh, you know, social media contact where you have back and forth, where maybe you post something and then there's a back and forth in the comments there. The best of all contacts is what kind of contact? Face to face. Boom, baby. In person. People still like it. Even with 2020 happening and the coronavirus all around us, people still want in person. We were built for community. Right, Keith? Amen. Mr. Pastor, we were Amen. built for community. We were built to be with other people. And so if we are able to get in front of other people, that's going to hold a much power, more powerful contact than a phone call would. Because a phone call, although it's voice to voice, you don't get all the other extrasensory options. I will always try to say in-person contacts um, are the way to go. So to Don's point, an open house presents a great opportunity for you to get a bulk number of contacts within a two or three hour span of time. And if our goal is to work smarter and not harder, 
then our priorities should be to get into open houses. As a brand new agent, if you leave this call with one go do, even if you're not a brand new agent, you've been doing it for a year, your go do is to get open houses. I would honestly challenge you to get into three open houses a month. Now you might be saying, well, Josh, you're on crack because I don't have three listings. Um, and that's okay. Other people do. And other people don't want to hold their own open houses. Where could we potentially go to find houses that could be held open? Realtors in our office. There you go. And Dana, what uh, tool do we have to find realtors in our office that have listings? Uh, the MLS. Yes, ma'am. Our KW uh, app. I am going to share my screen with those of you who can see. Um, I'm going to go to the MLS. This is my MLS here in Columbus. So Keith and Tiffany, I apologize, but I'm sure that you have something very similar down there. If I go to the menu and I go to office listings, office listings right here, this pulls up every listing that's within our office. And so if I were to click on the detail, scroll down a little bit, I can see who owns this listing. Tim Moore owns this listing. We'll probably stay away from Tim Moore's listings because he already runs a large team and they are going to do their own uh, marketing. Let's see who else has one. Jill Rudler. Okay, she's got a smaller team. She might, she might be cool with it. As I go down the list here, here we go. This house has been on the market now for 42 days and it's owned by Mary, Mary Lynn Homan. And I would bet <clears throat> that she's probably done a little bit of marketing on this house, but that she doesn't want to hold it open every single weekend. So you could probably just reach out to Mary Lynn and say, hey, I'm a little new. I'd love to try and get some contacts. I'd love to try to find a buyer for your house. And I'd love to provide you with some easy marketing that you don't have to do at your own expense. Would you mind if I held your house open this Saturday? And odds are Mary Lynn's going to be like, uh, or Mar yeah, Mary Lynn's going to say probably yes. Casey, you've held your, uh, your condos there open like how many weeks in a row? Four. Four weeks in a row. So I bet Casey would at, even at this point say, hey, anybody else want to hold that open? Um, <laughs> The reason that we want to get you guys in front of open houses, number one, to get experience with the process. And number two, to get in touch with people face to face. I would say, I don't know the exact statistic, but I would venture a guess to say that about 50% of people who come into an open house are unrepresented buyers. That's me just pulling a number out of thin air. That's not validated, but or and I think that 50% success rate on maybe having a chance to convert people, that's a pretty awesome opportunity. Um, during the height of the market, you know, if you can find a good listing in a good area, like we, we classify as a hot listing, maybe the, the realtor doesn't want to do their own open house, they don't like doing them, you could probably guarantee 30 to 40 people through if you schedule the open house for an appropriate time. Let's talk about that for a second. So when should we, if we're being strategic, when should we be scheduling open houses for? Not while people are at work. Weekends. Not while people are at work. So yeah, weekends are normally safe bets. What, uh, what time frames are you thinking? Two to four Sunday. Two to four Sunday. Would you do here in central Ohio, this is a, this is a couple yes or no answers and y'all can participate. Would you do an open house if uh, the Steelers were playing the Browns at noon, would you do it two to four? No. Cool. 
<clears throat> would you on a football Saturday here in Columbus where we're playing, you know, anybody on a noon game, would you do it noon to two? Yeah. No. No. We have to understand what's going on in the world around us. I'm only bringing up sports because that's really the only thing that happens during the week. And um, you know, churches, heck, churches aren't even really, most of them probably aren't meeting in person. And most of them are typically done by noon. So really anytime afternoon should be pretty safe. What should we do to get ready for a listing or for an open house? Market it. Market it. Absolutely. What'd you say, Casey? The Facebook ad. Got one running right now. Yep, and that goes to marketing. You want you want to treat this like it's your own. And if in all honesty, if somebody asked me to um, to market a listing of mine for an open house. I would have no problem saying absolutely do it. And, uh, you know, I hope you get some great contacts. I don't think any of our agents in our office, and I can probably speak for cap partners as well to say that I don't know of any agents that would tell you not to market it. Like you want to, you want to get the word out that number one, you're a realtor. Number two, you're a successful realtor. And number three, you've got a fun event coming up. You should be marketing this on what platform do you think? The MLS. How do you market it on the MLS? Put an open house on your uh, listing. You can put it on your MLS. Yeah, and you're not going to have access to other people's listings, but let's say you get a listing or you, you're borrowing like Mary Lynn's here, you would just simply ask her, hey, Mary Lynn, would you mind updating the listing to show an open house this weekend? And what that'll do is it'll auto-populate to realtor.com and to Zillow, the time of the open house. Um, Michael, I know you had an opportunity with Zillow not auto-populating correctly this past Sunday. Uh, that is a one-off, that is not typical. Typically there's no issues. Okay, what, what, where else should you be marketing the open house? Josh, I saw um, the lady I assisted with her open house. She had done a really cool postcard and took it to all the neighbors even in the area of the open house. Yes, and so Brian under his breath said, expensive. <laughs> That could be expensive, or you could do it really cheap. How could, how could we do flyers for the neighborhood for cheap? Josh, someone, it looks like someone said, let them in. Oh. It looks like someone said, can someone tell Josh to let me in? All right. Sometimes you guys can get flyers printed from your title companies. Bingo. Yeah. Let's use leverage. Okay. Leverage means using other people to forward your cause, right? So um, using the title company is a great avenue of getting free stuff. Um, so Chelsea, you might want to mute your mute yourself there. Sorry. You can pair with the title company and they will likely print you flyers for free. That'd be pretty nice, right? So there needs to be some foresight when you have an open house coming up, because remember, I'm challenging you all to get into three open houses a month. At the very least, guys, do yourself a favor and get one open house a month. The real go-getters, the real people who in this group that want to, that want to aggressively increase their business opportunities, you'll get three open houses a month. Okay, but if we're going to do this, we need to do it the right way and we need to be aggressive. So we need to communicate with everybody. And that doesn't just mean folks through the MLS. And it doesn't also just mean the people in the neighborhood. How else can we market this? Casey, earlier you said a Facebook ad. So Facebook on an ad, which I got running right now. So it's, it's cycled for today through even through Monday. So if I get other leads from that, but um, also you can put it in marketplace. 
I'm glad you said it because if you didn't, I was going to. Facebook Marketplace is a great way to get contacts for free. If you do not know how to use Facebook Marketplace, it's so simple. Number one, ask a person in your office that's got a listing if you can advertise their listing and try to get a buyer for them. Or if you've got an upcoming open house that you're using, use that. Take a screenshot of the house or go to the house, take a photo, whatever. Ask for permission again, because that photo does not belong to you. If you had to, worst case scenario, you could always steal from the auditor site because that is public record. And then you're gonna go onto Facebook Marketplace and post a listing. People will inevitably ask, especially if it's a hot listing, people ask, is this still available? Boom, right then and there, that's the contact because you're gonna respond quickly and either say yes, no, or you know whatever. Yes, this is available. When can I schedule a showing for us? Or no, unfortunately, this is not available anymore. However, I've got one just like it right down the street. When can I schedule a showing for us? Are you free at one o'clock or two o'clock? So Facebook Marketplace, that's a great, great opportunity for us. And that's something that you don't have to have an open house for. Uh, back in December or back in January of 2020 that started this year, I didn't have any listings. And so I would ask all the people in our, in our market center, like, Hey, you mind if I promote your listing? And every single week I would put at least two or three homes on marketplace. And although it didn't pan out for myself, I know other people that have had great success uh, with following up with people who have reached out and keeping them like on a nurture campaign and then they've turned into real legitimate buyers, which turn into real legitimate dollars. What other avenues do we have to market? Signs. How many signs is too many signs for an open house? Never too many signs. Unless they look overly done. I have one on, on three different street corners and then the other corner bring him to me. So the, the main intersections near my listing. So I put out uh, nine open house signs. Um, and one of them says even says open house now so that they think it's uh, uh, something they need to do right now. I love it. So we're talking about directionals. I do wanna let everyone also know, and Dana knows this, uh, she used some, I believe, because you're in the coaching program, I have access to a library full of stuff. So if you have a listing and you want to hold an open house, I have some directionals. I think I have five generic directionals, which will help direct people towards your open house. They're little red corrugate plastic signs that look like houses and it says open house this way. Yes. Um, how can you dress up these signs and make even more people draw their eyes to it? Balloons. Balloons. Absolutely. Everyone. Have fun with it, guys. Like, go, like, I don't know, pick two colors that you'd like to brand your business as, and then just make that your forever colors. Like, I'm going to stock up on these balloons and I'm going to tie them, you know, two or three to each sign. Nothing grabs the eyes more than something kind of fluttering in the wind. So, Unique riders. What's that? Unique riders. Riders for the signs. Yeah. There was a listing, I don't know, a handful of years ago up on uh, County Line. And it was near that little shopping plaza there. And on the si for sale sign, it had a rider that said free pizza. Nice. Yeah, what does that even mean? Like, who knows what that means? Is it is it like free pizza today or is it free pizza if I buy this house? It, it's it's a great rider because it makes people think. Well, and everybody who drove past that listing because it's right there on the corner of County Line, it, they're going to remember that. They're going to they're going to be well. Wait a minute, hang on. I like that. Have fun with it, guys. Like, have fun with your marketing and and go big or go home is what I say. I, I bought a couple of those, um, like the, like you see at car dealerships, they, they're stakes that you stake in the ground, but they're like flags that are six feet tall and they kind of wave in the wind. It says agent inside. You can get those for pretty cheap. Additionally, like, 
I think after this, I'm going to get in the market for one of those like uh, flailing inflatable guys, you know, <laughs> why not? Why not have some fun with it? Like that's what draws attention. And that's what also, if you think about the real purpose for an open house, it's for people to come in and see that you might be fun to work with. Odds are, if you've got a bunch of, you know, balloons and all kinds of stuff, that is a subliminal message that you're fun. Not that you're a clown, that you're fun. Okay. <laughs> what other marketing tactics can you, can you employ? This is really good stuff. I will, say, I will call out Casey right now, and I will also challenge Casey. Casey has done a great job the past few weeks of putting videos up on social media. So I've seen him on Instagram, I'm pretty sure, and I would assume then Facebook as well. But why not also lean on other avenues such as LinkedIn, Twitter, if you've got Twitter? Are there any other platforms you could use? I don't know. TikTok. TikTok. Have some real fun with it. But yeah, he's done a great job with the videos. The only issue that I've seen with the videos is that it's the day of, and it's normally as it's happening. If we're truly trying to market and drive traffic, we need to give people a heads up days in advance. So have a strategy. I will share with you guys my strategy for listing a home and doing an open house so that when you guys get your own, you can employ your own strategy, whatever you think is going to work. At the end of the day, we want to get to the open house for two reasons. We want to get to the open house for my business so that I can grow my business and get more buyers from it because every listing that I, sh that I have should turn up one new buyer. Every one listing should turn into one new buyer. How does that happen? Through the open house through meeting somebody at the open house. If that stat is not accurate for us, which it's not for me, that's, that's, that, that would be a great stat to have for me. It's not as high as that. Then I need to revisit my strategy and how I'm marketing that and how I'm attacking the open house because we really should be getting buyers from our open houses. So that's the first reason. But also if we get all the way to the open house, the odds of additional foot traffic getting through uh, that first weekend is really high. And so your odds of getting multiple offers by having things get to the open house are much higher. So my strategy for listing a home, I typically go active in the MLS on Wednesday, which means I need to get photography done by Monday so that I can have the photos in hand by Tuesday and start marketing it as a coming soon. Because here in central Ohio, we've got this new law, right? We cannot market it coming soon longer than 24 hours before we actually go live. Please remember that you can market it coming soon, 24 hours prior to the actual listing. If it's longer than 24 hours, you are in violation and could, could, um, could incur a severe fine. If you'll recall a year ago, you used to see uh, coming soon signs all over the place and you never knew like when it would actually go active. It was kind of frustrating. So now you kind of know if you see a coming soon sign, it's gonna be active tomorrow. But you should also market that, right? So I'm marketing it, hey, coming soon, coming tomorrow, open house Sunday. So boom, on Tuesday, I've already started the marketing. I'm laying the groundwork for all my potential buyers out there in the world on Facebook, all the eyeballs, because I'm going to promote the crap out of it on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, etc. So that starts on Tuesday with the marketing piece. Wednesday, I get it active in the MLS, but I don't start showings until I typically don't start till Friday. That allows me a full day or two to go to the neighborhood and like Don was saying, pass out literature to the neighbors. People who do open houses at the highest levels and have the most success with obtaining new buyers spend a good amount of time in the actual surrounding neighborhood. In your guys' minds, why would we spend time inviting neighbors to our open house? 
They might know somebody that wants to move into their neighborhood. Why else? They, they perhaps might be interested in selling and they'll see the value of the neighbors. Exactly. You're marketing to not only buyers because you want to, you want this thing to be bought by somebody, but you also are marketing to people who don't know who they're going to use to list their home. A lot of people come into like, so if I'm a neighbor and I'm walking into an open house of my next door neighbor, I may be to Chelsea's point considering selling in the near future. And I, it, this may serve as an informal interview or an informal listing appointment. Because if I walk in to that open house and I am blown away by how amazing the home looks and how amazing my interaction with that agent is, do you think that's going to leave a lasting impression in their mind? Absolutely. Heck yeah. And then when it is their time to list, oh, well, that one open house that I went to, they got that thing sold in that first weekend. And I had a great exchange with that agent. And oh, I got his card. That's right. Oh, and he's been drip campaigning me for a year because he got my contact information. He's been stalking me. He's annoyed me into using him. It all goes back to like, you know, that marketing piece. So, you know, if we're doing a great job and we're inviting the neighbors, you're building rapport within that community. We, we, we've talked before about farming and like trying to get ownership in a specific neighborhood. If you can find homes that are even, even listed by other agencies, why not? I mean, there's no laws against it. Some brokerages might not like it, but uh, if, if there's a KW Excel listing and I'm a cap partners agent, for instance, why not ask, uh, you know, one of you to hold your house open if that's in the neighborhood that I want to start owning. Let's think strategically here and, and just start get, having a reason to connect with the neighbors. It's super important. <clears throat> I know 2020 is a little unique. Um, we've had um, a little fear in going door to door, but what would prevent you from at least at the, at the very least printing off a flyer or having your title company do that for you and like putting it in their mailbox or like not opening their mailbox. That's illegal but like sliding it in there uh, in between their flag and their mailbox or in their door. Get the word out. So I, li I, I list on Wednesday. I go active with showings on Friday. And then what I'm going to start doing, because I talked to my coach about this, I said, coach, I'm not even getting to the open house because Columbus market is so hot. And she's like, well, we just need to re-strategize. And so in the agent to agent comments, if I know I've got a, a hot listing, I'm going to say, please hold all offers open until, I don't know, 6 p.m. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That guarantees that I get to the open house and that guarantees that I get my contacts. That guarantees that I get my potential buyer. That guarantees that more agents are going to have ample amount of time to get their, their buyers in, which will also guarantee the, more, the higher likelihood of multiple offers. Brian said he saw one this week where it said in the agent to agent, no offers will be considered within the first 72 hours. And it's one of those things like it might piss you off if you're the buyer's agent, but what can you do? Like everyone's playing by the same rules and at least the ground rules are, are established right from the get go. So those of you who have had listings recently, I just want you to ask yourself this question. I'm not going to ask you to answer that. So Michael, Dana, uh, Dawn recently, Casey, have you marketed it? Have you marketed your listings enough? And the answer to that, that you're probably going to uh, come to is the same answer that I would come to. And the answer is no, I haven't marketed it enough. And so the good news is we get in, we'll get more chances at this, right? We're going to know more people that need to buy or sell a home and we'll be able to do more open houses. We'll be able to market. Moral of the story, you should really get a bunch of touches out of this. If I'm starting to market it on Tuesday and I really want to drive traffic, why not also market it on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, boom. And then even Monday after you've gone into contract, say, just found a buyer. You're staying in front of all these people on social media. 
you're calling around the neighborhood because the title company provided you with the phone numbers of the neighborhood. And you're saying, hey, it was great meeting you the other day. And uh, just wanted to let you know, we just wanted a contract on that house. So if ever you need any help listing your home, or if you know of anyone looking to move, let me know. Here's my number. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but would it be work that would pay off? Absolutely. How should we get the open house ready? Like the actual house. What should it look like on the day of op the open house? Stage appropriately, lights on, freshly vacuumed, maybe some flowers, some cookies. Yeah, those are great, great suggestions. Anything else? Signs. <laughs> How should it smell? Smell good. <laughs> Sure. Neutral. Um, yeah, so I'll give you a great example here. And this this is an example from my, um, this is a, su a success story, so to speak, uh, in which I actually held an open house and got a buyer from it on the smelliest house I've ever had to list, okay? This house smelled like 300 dogs lived in it. I, I kid you not. Wet dogs, Okay. And it was nasty. I walked in it. It's one of those houses that the owners don't even realize how bad it smells because they're just immune to it at this point. I walked in and it like punched me in the face. So over the, over the course of the three days leading up to the open house, I had every candle burning. We vacuumed it 3000 times. We had the windows open the whole time and it was freezing cold. We did everything possible, but it, it came down to an honest conversation between me and the seller to say, Hey, if you want this thing sold, I know you don't realize it, but I have to be honest with you. It smells like there's animals all over the place. And we've got to, we've got to cut that back a little bit. The morning of, I baked cookies. I lit candles. I plugged in air fresheners. I put powder on the carpet and the furniture and vacuumed the snot out of it. I still smelled the dog. The good news is none of the buyers did. Anyway, we get we had great traffic. I would I would say that I probably had 20, 20 to 25 people through. So that's 20 to 25 contacts in two hours. I do not personally hold houses open longer than two hours because what I found is the majority, I would say 75% of people come through in that first hour. And then the second hour, I'm normally just kind of standing there. What I need to probably do is get one of those sandwich boards and go out to the corner and stand and like, like twist it and like uh, puppies this way, you know, some, something like that, but haven't gotten that far. So two hour increment, 25 people, boom, there's a quarter of your week's contacts in two hours. That's the way to do it right there. That's working smarter, not harder. But uh, a person came late. So my, my open house was done at three o'clock. They came at 3.05. I was literally locking up. I said, hey, you mind if uh, we walk through? I said, well, I don't mind. Got to talking with them. And before we knew it, uh, they were writing an offer on that house. They didn't get it. And so I represented them on the purchase of another house because of the open house. It was awesome. So um, that's my real life story of how to get a buyer. <laughs> from an open house is just get lucky, honestly, but also to, to try to establish rapport and relationship while people are in the house with you. Um, it is important to have those honest conversations with the seller too. It's a challenging conversation sometimes, especially if their house isn't right. But if I've got four or five days to get the house right for an open house, then I'm gonna make sure that it lands. What else is important when you're when you're holding an open house, like from the appearance of the home? What do you like to see on a first impression? You're walking up the you're walking up the street towards this open house. Curb appeal. Curb appeal. What does curb appeal look like to you, Dawn? Just like nothing out 
front, like a trash can or the yard mowed and picked up, like the house I listed, their mailbox was kind of junked up, so we scraped and painted it. Um, no weird, like flags or comment signs like we took that stuff down so there were no political views like things like that I we had them take down uh, Brian says power wash which leads me to talk about landscaping I don't want anyone to spend thousands of dollars getting their yard landscaped if they're just going to turn around and sell the home and there are some easy things that we can do to make sure that there's curb appeal from a landscaping point of view also, power washing a home costs like 150 to 200 bucks. If you know somebody uh, who owns a business, if you do it yourself, it's free. I don't encourage you to do it yourself. But uh, from a landscaping perspective, what don't you want to see in flower beds? Weeds. Weeds. Have there been times where I've gone to somebody's house and trimmed their shrubs and pulled weeds before a listing? Heck yeah. It's one easy way to prove my value very quickly and to provide an experience that is unlike any other agent in Columbus. They think the world of you when they, when they see you actually busting your hump to sell their home and actually doing work. My hope is that we all get too busy to be able to do that ourselves, but then we hire that out, right? We leverage that out by hiring a, a landscaper to go do that. Spend a hundred bucks and have them do it. What else could we do that's super easy from a curb appeal standpoint? Let's say it's the spring or the summer or the fall. Flowers are in bloom. Why not put a potted flower out there? Grab, a, grab an urn from your house, borrow it for the weekend and just plop it out in front of, the, front of that house. That's a $10 fix. Go buy a pot of flowers for 10 bucks, boom. That's great curb appeal. So then you walk in the house. What should the interior of the house look like? You're talking about first impressions here. Decluttered. Yeah, decluttered is so important. We want people to be able to envision themselves there. Not a lot of personal photos and stuff. Amen, amen. Um, I, I'm always very respectful when I go to a listing appointment to to make sure that I, I tow that uh, line very carefully to say, hey, I love the fact that you've got so many decorations of your own family up on the wall. And, you know, I explain it to them. I want to be I want to be an educator on the, the buying and selling side and say, hey, a buyer wants to envision themselves here. So let's let's take half of those down at least. And let's out a little bit. What about from a staging perspective? minimal furniture so it looks like there's more space than there may actually be amen staging is super important so if there's a room that's super cluttered let's ask them to at least throw it out in the garage people will understand if the garage is cluttered people will not understand if the front room that you first walk into and see is cluttered they just can't get past it it's the first impression brian also mentioned religious symbols throughout the home um, you know, I'm a religious person and I understand that other people are as well. And if you're tr really trying, truly trying to, um, um, envision yourself being in the home, you might not agree with that person's religious or political statements that they have in the house. Those are, those are all, this is all great conversation here. So, okay. We made it to the open house. Wonderful. We marketed the snot out of it. We invited everyone to it. We created a Facebook event even. We didn't talk about that. Create a Facebook event. Invite people in the neighborhood to it. Do a Facebook ad and market it to, you know, 15 miles within the radius of that, that uh, geographic location. Invite the neighbors to it. Uh, phone calls around the, the neighborhood. Okay, it's, it's, it's the day. What time should we get to the open house? At least 30 minutes. At least 30 minutes. Brian says an hour early. We want to give ourselves ample time to get set up. Does it take time to plant this to plant the yard signs and to get the balloons blown up and to get the cookies on the table? 
and to light all the candles and to make sure that every window is open and that every blind is open and that every light is on and that the cat poop, the cat that just crapped on the floor gets cleaned up. Absolutely, you should walk off every single room before the open house starts. This, is, this has your fingerprint on it. This is your open house, even if it's not your listing. This is your baby and you wanna make sure your baby's beautiful. It's what you stand for, okay? So, great, it's open house time. Started at one o'clock. My goal here is to get contacts that lead to more business. What is the most important thing that I should have to capture people's data? Sign-in sheet. Yes, sign-in sheet. Um, does anybody have any useful tips for sign-in sheets? Michael, Don, um, Dana, did you guys do anything that worked for you? Brian, you have any? useful well covid was easy like we just i actually had an assistant i guess if you will someone that helped me that sat out on the porch and just ushered you know one or two people in at a time and took their info so that was kind of just an easy so due to covid can we take your information and they all gave it that's awesome and i won't tell anybody that your assistant was your husband Thanks. <laughs> that was a great hey, use of the husband. You, you, you use, right? <laughs> hey, in all honesty, though, like metering people in guarantees that you get their contact information. And with COVID still, um, you know, active, we need to be putting people's safety very high. Um, and so to meter people in to only have maybe one or two groups in at a time, that's a great idea. And in order to get in, hey, I need your I need your contact information. We want to make sure that we're safe and sound here. So um, I'd like your name, your email address, and your phone number, please. Also, hey, uh, we're doing a random, or, or maybe we're doing a random giveaway for. Uh, we're going to do a raffle for uh, a lucky person who's here for a twenty-five dollar Starbucks gift card. I like that. Just as a as a hey, thanks for giving us your information. I know it's not cool, but. Um, we need it. And if, if a person doesn't want to give you their information, just say, our seller's requiring this. Blame the seller, even if it's a little white lie. It is imperative. If you're not getting the contact information, then why are you doing this? It is a waste of your time, complete waste of your time. Because as soon as that open house is done and you have a list of 20 to 25 names with contact information, you just added 20 to 25 names to your database. Should you also have like a yes or no if they're currently working with an agent? Sure. Okay. There's, yeah, you can do it however you want, whatever works for you. Because to your point, you're not going to go try to try to get business from somebody who's working with an agent. Um, so you can either do a paper method where you actually have a physical sheet of paper with a sign in. Or you can do a digital version. So they make apps on your um, phone. You could do it on your phone. You could do it on your computer. I have one for my laptop that I use. It's called, I think it's literally called like Open House Pro or something. It was free and it looks very professional. You can put a, a shot of the home up and it stays on the screen. And then it will, um, it'll disappear as soon as you put your information in so that you know nobody else can see it. And once the open house is done, you'll get an email with all the contact information of everybody that signed in. The challenge there is that if you leave it like on the table or whatever, you have to direct people to it to sign in. Your goal is to have 100% participation in the sign-in sheet. How should you be dressed for your open house? Professional. This is, this is common sense, uh, business casual, professional, um, be yourself and be, have common sense guys. If you're in your field, should you be wearing shorts and a Hawaiian shirt? No, you should probably be suited up. I hate to say it. If you're in uh, Yellow Springs where it's a bunch of hippies out there, sure, <laughs> it's cool, but have common sense, I beg of you. 
don't show up in flip flops and sandals just because that's who you are. Okay. You do have to sell to certain clientele. And if you're trying to sell yourself, they want to know that you've got common sense. Don't dress like a slouch, I guess is what I'm getting at. Um, what else? What should your mentality be like? I mean, I, I, I say to everyone, be yourself, be outgoing, be somebody that people want to work with. Have an attitude that is very positive. Even if you're having a crap, um, I held an open house the, the day after I had food poisoning. I was up all night. I was trying like hell to get somebody to take my open house because I was literally in pain and nobody would do it. So I ended up going and I, I couldn't keep anything down, but I smiled through it all and it ended up not being so bad. If you smile long enough, you'll start to believe that you're happy <laughs> and uh, it, it can be fun. It can be a fun exercise. Brian says, forcing a, forcing a smile releases a chemical in your brain. I didn't know I was with uh, with a brain scientist here. That's good information. I believe it. We'll Are y'all having margaritas? What's that? Are y'all having margaritas? Oh no, not this go. Brian said he makes a killer margarita. Well, maybe next time. Um, in terms of margaritas, though, why not have fun with the open house and have, to your point, cookies or candy or uh, you know, with Corona, you got to play it safe. But let's say we're in a non-Corona times. I've had uh, open houses where I've served wine, beer. Why don't I have fun with it? What else could we do? We could have a food truck out front to draw more attention. Like we could do all kinds of stuff. We could make it a party. It's all really up to your seller at the end of the day. Like, are they cool with it? Then I'm cool with it, right? If you were to, oh no, I accidentally got a hundred people to come to your open house. And that's, I got 50 new contacts and three new buyers. Oh no, it's terrible. <sighs> Brian just brought up a great point. Make sure they lock up their valuables. Uh, this goes under underrated. If they have uh, pills that they take, hide those. Make sure that your seller hides those. If they have high dollar electronics, collectibles, anything that's important to them, make sure it's not out in public uh, public view. Super, super important. Additionally, let's say the open house is done. What happens after the open house? We obviously, we lock up, we, we leave it the way we found it. What's the biggest thing we can do immediately following the open house? Post on. Thank you notes, like for everyone that attended with a business card in it. Yeah, essentially follow up, reach out immediately afterwards and say, hey, I really enjoyed meeting you, John and Sue Evans. Uh, I really look forward to convert to continuing this conversation. I'll, uh, I'd love to have a conversation about what you're looking for if this isn't the perfect house for you. Or, you know, hey, Jim and Bob, I uh, love getting to know you. I know you said that you might not be interested in this house, but that you might be interested soon. Let's set up a time to talk. Let's go grab coffee. Immediately after, there's an immediacy there. And, and I think people really respect folks that, um, that are prompt like that. Don't let a few days go by because they're going to forget who you are. Hit them while they're fresh. Hit it while it's fresh. Well, and I messed up. Actually, I learned a valuable lesson. Like I was so tied into selling that house. And even though I had 38 contacts from the open house and we had offers right away, we had some issues that I lost sight of those contacts between learning command and dealing with that being my first sell and so excited. And you and I talked about this a little bit. And as I was re contacting these people, three people had said, Don, it was so nice to meet you at the open house. We actually just purchased a house. And I was like, what a bummer because I, you know, again, if you stay on top of it and I was like, well, I lost those three potentials. Are you ever going to let that happen again, Don? No. Okay. And why? Because you're going to build a system a system and a model is what's going to save us uh, in the future. We learn once and then we, we, we progress, we evolve. A system might look like as soon, okay, here's step one. As soon as I leave, I'm going to get in my car. 
I'm going to film a video and then I'm going to send it to every single, I'm going to send it in a text to every single person that came through thanking them for coming. I'm also then going to email that video to them. Tomorrow, I'm going to call them and appreciate them and say, hey, so great to meet you yesterday. What are your thoughts? What feedback can you give me? And then, hey, let's grab coffee. And then a week from now, what you're basically doing is setting up a system of contacts that you will infiltrate their, um, their network and you will become their, their crest or their Colgate, meaning they're going to think of you when they think of realtors because you, you hit it off with them and you've been in touch with them. And then you're going to put them on a drip campaign. You're going to put them in a smart plan through command. We can all talk about that or you can attend uh, Rachel's calls on how to build smart plans. And you're going to systematize it to make it easy so you can be you can set reminders for yourself. But ultimately, you're making it easier for yourself to build more business. And there can be no better way, no easier way than through open houses. So your go do's guys coming out of this are to get some open houses, get them on the calendar. If not for this coming weekend, well, because we're already at Thursday, I'd rather you some lead time to, to actually uh, you know advertise it. Start asking agents, hey, would you mind if I held your house open next week? Saturday or Sunday, it doesn't matter. Look at the schedule of things that are happening in the world around you. Make sure you're not scheduling over top of the Super Bowl. You know, no one will be there. Um, but be strategic and be aggressive. I think if, if we were all aggressive, no matter what we decided to do, we'd be successful because we would be aggressive. We would maybe fail, but we would fail forward and we would learn from it and we would grow from it. So the challenge to us all is to get open houses, get into open houses, get contacts, and always remember 100 contacts on average will lead to at least one or two appointments per week. That's why I say 100 contacts. The folks that um, filled out their Google form, I appreciate it. Um, many of you got 100 contacts and every single person that got 100 contacts got at least one appointment. So my ratio still works 100 to one. Some of you had a hundred and what was it? Chelsea, you ended up having four appointments this week because you got 130 contacts. I believe it was. Awesome. Yeah. So let me, let me get this right. If I get more contact, if I talk to more people about real estate, I'm more likely to get appointments. Holy cow. So the more, the moral of the story is challenge yourself have conversations, get in front of people, hold open houses, think of ways that you can get in touch with folks. Cool? Cool. All right. Um, as always, it's a pleasure to, uh, to be in touch with y'all. Next week, uh, we will be talking about, I don't even remember, somebody help me out. What are we talking about next week? Look something fun. Anyways, I'll send a reminder out. So I look forward to it too. Uh, Daniela and Tiffany, I appreciate you guys joining in and uh, look forward to hearing some successes next week. All right. Let's make sure we're filling out the Google form that Katie has been sending out to you guys on Wednesdays. It is important because I look at that and get a snapshot for what we need to be learning. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.